Okay, go ahead. Good evening. I begin with our planet, Earth, in space, spinning around as it careens around the sun in the solar system, going round the galaxy at unimaginable speeds. We, here in Bristol, are going round the axis of the Earth at a particular speed which is about to come up on the screen. That speed. That's the speed of you right now in Bristol. This principle of the moving Earth was worked out as far back as the ancient Greeks, but it wasn't until Galileo that it was accepted as proven. Why was it resisted? Well, one reason, because it just doesn't feel like the Earth is spinning and moving, and we trusted our human senses to present reality as it really is. Hopefully, nowadays, we're not so naive. We know that senses are subject to illusion. Optical illusions, like those two coloured dots being objectively the same colour, uh, and luminance, oh, they do look the same luminance. Um, <laughs> And the two squares they're in being the same luminance to, despite what our senses tell us. So we've been dethroned, and science often dethrones us. Um, it showed us we weren't the centre of the universe. Darwin showed us we weren't a specially created life form. And I want to talk about a sort of personal psychological kind of dethroning, uh, which comes from the last few decades of psychological research on human judgment and decision making. And the psychologists have come up with a whole zoo of different biases and effects um, that interrelate. I'm only going to be able to show you the names of some of them. Uh, but together, they undermine a lot of our everyday certainties about the knowledge we think we have. So it turns out that human judgments are often made on less information than we hope they'd be. The human brain takes a complex question and just sort of phones it in. It finds an answer and says, well, that's close enough, that'll do. And a, a depressing proportion of our judgments that we're certain of uh, due to that sort of process. And there are a whole set of mechanisms for defending those conclusions that we reach, biased interpretation of evidence, biased interpretation of the past, to make our conclusions or our decisions seem more rational to us. There are halo effects and stereotype effects. When you go to that job interview, make a good impression in the first minute, in the first tiny fraction of a minute, because that will condition how they, perception, how they perceive you through the whole of the rest of the meeting. And be tall is also good advice. Uh, <laughs> memory is amazingly pliable. Psychologists have managed to create false memories. They don't have total license to completely reprogram your memory, but they've managed, under experimental conditions, to create false memories which are subjectively completely convincing. And in social perception, perception of other people, there's a whole set of effects which hides the effect of the other biases. So although you may see other biases in other people, really clearly, we have a blind spot around ourselves. And I think we need to take the lesson of this whole set of research from our institutions and the way we do things and learn lessons from it. We're only starting to do that. Some academics have applied it to uh, some areas. So there are a couple of academics who applied this to the whole judicial process, arrest, interrogation and trial, and showed how these sort of self-justifying effects can magnify suspicions or uh, stereotypes to the point where innocent people go to jail. These uh, researchers applied bias research to the decision to go to war and found that most of the biases favour violent conflict solutions to political problems which is really worrying. Uh, this, this is a fantastic set of research. Over 20 years assessing hundreds of political pundits. And the accuracy of their predictions was usually worse than a chimp. And it was certainly much worse than, say, a statistical model. Um, business success and active investing in the stock market, two areas where what we've conventionally taken to be expertise has turned out to be largely based on illusions. And I hope and expect there'll be a domino effect as we apply this, we, we sort the wheat from the chaff in lots of other areas of what we now think of as expertise and knowledge. But does this mean that knowledge is pointless and we can't achieve it and we should give up? No, I don't think so, because the dethroning of subjective judgment, subjective certainty, is also the triumph of social knowledge, of um, comparing checkability, of replicable effects, of, sort of the core of, of science. Um, of statistically measurable, objectively measurable things. If you're involved in programming and data in the web, please open up the data so as much as possible we can automate this process of measurement and checking and analysis. 
Thank you very much.